Okay, these are uh, Parents' Day Lectures by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Yeah. 1971, 75, 76, and 77. Wow. Life and Disappearance article by uh, His Holiness Shiva Ram Swami Hirayi Vishnu. His Divine Grace, Srila Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada's Appearance Day evening, Gaurav Kaur, February 15, 1971. Prabhupada. This is Srila Prabhupada. Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, my spiritual master, is Advent day today. In 1922, I was at that time very much engaged in Congress activity. I was very much a devout follower of Mahatma Gandhi, and at that time, I was manager also in a very big chemical concern in Calcutta. Perhaps you may know Dr. Bose's laboratory. One of my friends, he's still living, Sri Narendra Nath Mudi. He informed me that, quote, one single person has come, let us go and see, end quote. At that time, I was a young man, and I did not care very much about so-called saintly persons. Because in our house, my father used to receive so many sannyasis, but some of them were not very, not very to the standard, and due to my association with college friends, younger days, I lost my faith practically, although I was born in a Vaishnava family. My father was a pure Vaishnava. From my childhood, he gave me Radha Krishna deity for worship, a Rath. I was playing with my boyfriends, Rathyatra, Dola, like that. My father encouraged, so I was trained up in this line. But in my youthful age, when I was a college student, gradually, by their bad association or something, gradually I lost my activities. But when this friend, Mr. Mulat, took me to Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, he immediately asked me that, quote, you are educated young boys, why don't you take up Lord Chaitanya's message and preach to the Western world, end quote. In the very first sight, he told me, at that time, I was, I argued with him that, quote, you are a dependent nation, and who is going to hear about our message, end quote. So he defeated my argument aside. There is no necessity of closing I think he's talking to someone else, I'm not sure. Uh, so he defeated my argument. There's no necessity of closing. Maybe the curtains he was talking about, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yet, yes, he defeated my argument. Now he's returning to the, what he's saying. He was learned scholar. What I was, I was still boy. So I agreed, chuckles. And that was my, that was, that I was defeated. So after finishing our visit with Bakstan Saraswati, I got some impression that, quote, here is a person who has taken Lord Chaitanya's message very seriously. Now it will be preached. End quote. Jai. Aglai Shobha. My, my friend asked my opinion that, what is your opinion? So I gave this opinion that here is a person who has taken Lord Chaitanya's movement very seriously and now it will be preached. So that was in 1922. Then in 1923, I left Calcutta on business account and I started my business at Allahabad. But I was always thinking of my Guru Maharaj, although I was that time not initiated. But the impression was there. I was thinking, quote, I met a very nice saintly person. So in this way, I passed from 1923 to 1928, I think. Then during uh, Kumbh Kumbha Mela, uh, there's a child making a noise. Stop that noise he's making. <laughs> In 1928, my Guru Maharaj, along with other disciples, came to Allahabad for starting their branch there. So some gentleman known to me might have told them that, quote, the proprietor of such and such business, Prayag Pharmacy, he's a very nice gentleman. He can help you in so many ways. So they came to me, and I saw the same saintly persons whom I met in 1922. I was very glad to receive. In this way, my connection was more intimate with my Guru Maharaj. And in 1936 to, uh, or 1933, I was initiated officially. Although I was initiated 1922. But officially, I was initiated 1933. Although from 20, 1922 to 1933, 
I was always thinking of His divine grace, Bhakti Santa Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. So in 1936, he was to pass away by 31st December. Mm -hmm. So I do not know. Out of my own accord, I wrote him one letter that, quote, Guru Maharaj, you have got many disciples. Some of them are directly serving you. I could not do so. I am a householder. So if you give me some direct service to you, it will be very kind of you, end quote. So he replied that letter that, quote, you try to preach in English language, the only persons who will be instructed by you and both you yourself will be benefited, end quote. Again, he said the same thing which he ordered me in 1922 at the first sight. Mm -hmm. Then there he passed away in 1936, 31st of December. <laughs> then there were other God brothers. I consulted him that, quote, Guru Maharaj said like this, what can I do? End quote. So they also encouraged me. I was writing. There was a paper, Harmonist. Then by their desires, I started this uh, back to Godhead in 1944. And that was also started on this Advent day. This Advent day. Back to Godhead was started. Yes. There was a meeting and many friends came. And we first started this back to Godhead on his Advent day. Wow. This Advent day, 1944. So our paper, Back to Godhead, the Advent day is also today. Yes. Hmm. Hamsadutta, this is Hamsadutta speaking. Uh, doubly auspicious. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada says, yes. So at that time, there was no sale of Back to Godhead. I was publishing about 1,000 copies and distributing so there was no income. I was spending 300, 400 rupees from my pocket. At that time, I had income. Then gradually, I wanted to remain as a grahasta and preach. But Guru Maharaj did not like this idea. I could understand. Sometime I was dreaming that he was calling me, and I was horrified that, quote, I'll have to go away from home, end quote. Then he laughs. But mm -hmm. there's laughter, laughter. What was what happened? Hmm. So at last it happened so that I left my home in 1950 and became a Vanakras. I was living sometimes here and there in, in 1959 I took sannyas, but that back to Godhead was going on. Then there was some inner dictation that, quote, this paper, back to Godhead, I am publishing, people are taking. Uh, end quote. Some people advised me that, why don't you write some books? That will be nice. So then I began to translate Shrimad Bhagavatam, and because I left home so practically, I had no income. With this Bhagavatam, or er, back to Godhead, I was selling, and I was some way or other maintaining, and whatever little money I had, that was finished. Then, when I wrote book, Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto was finished, so I approached the Bhaji, uh, perhaps Mataji knows this, chuckles, in 1962. So I asked him that, quote, you take this publication, end quote. So I am very much obliged to Bhaji. He said that, quote, our English painting, printing is not very efficient. You can get this book published from elsewhere. I shall partly help you, end quote. So he helped me with some money from the Dal Maya Trust, and I first, uh, or da, Dal Maya, uh, D A L M I A Trust. Dal Maya. Dal Maya. Dal Maya. That's right. Yeah, Dal Maya. And I, I first of all published my first part of Shrimad Bhagavatam. Then I published second part also. There was sale. Then there was no necessity of money. I was getting money by selling Shrimad Bhagavatam. Everyone appreciated. Even your American Embassy here. They purchased 18 copies, mm. and they gave me open order that, quote, whenever this Bhagavat will be published next part, subsequent parts, this is open order, 18 copies, each part. That order is still there. <laughs> wow. How about that? So after publishing three parts of readings, then automatically Guru Maharaj gave me indication that, quote, now you can start for America. So. Some way or other, in 1965, I went to America with great difficulty. 
But I took about 200 sets of books. So there was like three in each set, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You took that many? Like 600 books. 600 books. <laughs> you took that many? Yeah, no, it's, it is. It must have been a couple of trunks. A couple of trunks. Must have been. Must have been. I think it was shipped separately. Mm -hmm. mm. mm. That order is still there. So after publishing three parts of readings, then automatically Guru Maharaj gave me indication that now you start for America. Somewhere other 1965 went to America with great difficulty, but I took about 200 sets of books. The customs clearance was done. I told them that, quote, oh. I am taking these books for distribution, not for sale, end quote. Anyway, they passed, and with these books I reached America, and I was maintaining myself by selling these books for one year. There was no friend, and I was living in an apartment with great difficulty. Still, the whole, I mean to say, stock and my typewriter, my tape recorder, and everything was stolen. In this way, I was, became very much depressed. And I was going to the shipping company, quote, when the next ship is going for, for going to India. So they gave me such and such date. Then I thought, quote, let me wait for some time more. Then I shall return back, end quote. I had return ticket, of course. There was no difficulty in this way. In 1966, by selling these books, I had only $200. And I dared to take one apartment in a storefront. Storefront... One, one twenty-five per month, an apartment, seventy-five. So I had only two hundred dollars. So I advanced him two hundred. I did not know how to pay next month's rent. Mm -hmm. So I started in nineteen sixty-six, lecturing in a storefront and living in that apartment in twenty-six Second Avenue. Then gradually these boys, American boys and girls, began to come. And then I started my kirtan in Townsend Square. More and more these younger Americans they came to me and things were organized. Then I registered the Krishna Consciousness Society under Religious Act in New York in 1966. And gradually people took interest. People means the younger section. All the boys and girls, they were from 16. Not all 16, but they were 16. Krishna Das was at that time 16 years old, and between 20 and 30, only, I think, Keith, now Kirtananda Maharaj, he was at that time 29. Hagriva was, I think, 29. So in this way, this Hagriva, I met him on the street after renting the apartment in the storefront when I was returning. This Hagriva, Professor Howard Wheeler, he was philosophically minded. So he asked me, Swamiji, are you coming from India? So I still told, yes, I'm coming from India. So, are you interested in Indian philosophy? Yes, sir. So why don't you come? I have taken one storefront and apartment. So I came back. I showed him. Here's my storefront and apartment. You come in the evening. So, in Hindi, he said Hindi. So the agree, uh, the high Agriva in Kirtananda, Keith, and some other boys, I think, Satsuru, Pradyumna, this is Pradyumna, he says, Ravindra Saru? Prabhupada. Ravindra, yes, yes, uh, he was there. Tamakrishna, this is Tamakrishna speaking. Makunda, Shula Prabhupada, Makunda. In this way, five or six students used to come, gradually it developed. Then we started eat next branch in San Francisco, next branch in Montreal, next branch in Buffalo, Boston. In this way, now we have uh, got 45 branches. So practically, we began to work from 1968 to 66, I started. But in 67, I became very much sick. So I came back to India. And again, I went there in 1968. Practically, this propaganda work began vigorously from 1968. So from 1968, 69, 70, and this, 71. So three, four years, all these branches have grown up, and now practically, throughout the whole continent, Europe and America, they know what is Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, due to it, our propaganda, just like these boys. You have seen there chanting and dancing. We send street sankirtan, even the most busiest quarter of New York, Fifth Avenue, and they go. The American boys, they are very daring. Sometimes police arrest them, and police is not harassing. The public and police, both they are now sympathetic that, quote, here is a movement which is actually genuine and very beneficial to our people, end quote. They are sympathetic, 
And even some of the Christian priests, they are also very sympathetic. They say that, quote, these boys, American boys, they are our boys. They're so nice that they're mad after God, but we could not give them. Swamiji has given them, quote, so they, they appreciate, oh, end quote, so they appreciate. Actually, these boys, they come from Christian family, Jewish family. Uh, there are many churches in America. I was surprised, but I first went to Butler. That's a small county, but I saw there about dozens of churches. So I thought the uh, American people are very religiously minded, and actually so. The history of the American people, mostly they came from England for this religious purpose. So they migrated in America for being religiously advanced. Hmm. Wow, interesting. So American people, I very much appreciate them. They are religious. They have got very good potency for understanding God consciousness. That is my opinion. And I do not know why I was inclined to go to America. It was also Krishna's desire. Because I thought that, quote, if this movement, <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that, Vite Vite Ache Yata Nagaradi Gram Sarvatra Prabhachara Habi Mori Nam. That is his prediction that as many. Towns and villages are there on the surface of the globe. Everywhere, this message of Hare Krishna Mantra and Lord Chaitanya's name will be there. So mm -hmm. I thought that, quote, I should go to America. If the American people take it seriously, then other people will take it. Jai. So actually, that is happening. These boys are so enthusiastic in preaching that, on my word, they are going to any part of the world. Any part of the world. They are prepared to go to any part of the world. And just now, I received one letter from my disciple, Shimon Upendradas. He does not know Hindi, and in the Fiji island, there are many Indians, but still he is making propaganda. He is simply chanting Hare Krishna Mantra, Hare Krishna. door to door. They are also husband and wife, and people are very much appreciating. So my Guru Maharaj desire and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's prediction is now being fulfilled. At least it has begun to be fulfilled. So it is a genuine movement, authorized movement, and India's original culture. So our appeal to the Indian people that, quote, you should take seriously about this movement and try to cooperate with us, end quote. That will be glorification of Indian culture. At the present moment, India is known as very poor, poverty-stricken country. People are also impressed that, quote, they are beggars. They have got nothing to give. They simply come here to beg, end quote. Actually, our ministers go there and for some begging purpose. Quote, give us rice, give us wheat, give us money, give us soldiers. Actually, our ministers, oh, the Indian ministers go there and for some begging purpose. Give us rice, give us wheat, give us money, give us soldiers. End quote. Go where? Uh, go to other oh, countries, uh, maybe America. I'm not sure. America, yeah. America. That is their business, but this movement, for the first time, India is giving something to them. It is not a baby propaganda. It is giving propaganda because they are hankering after their substance, Krishna consciousness. They have enjoyed, enjoyed enough of this material consciousness. The material consciousness means to enjoy sex life and drink and have sufficient money. These three items, they have got sufficient, immense. They are so far material comforts. Oh, there is no conception in India how they are materially comfortable. Their roads, their cars, their machines. You cannot imagine how American roads are there. There are freeways in America. There are freeways without any stoppage. You can run your car in 70 mile speed and four cars going up and four cars going down and road just like velvet laughter. Our, our roads so there is no comparison of their material advancement. So I always, when I run in some freeway, these boys run our cars, and you will be very pleased that in each and every temple, we have got at least four cars, nice. Especially one car for me, and two cars for carrying them for a Sankirtan movement. Very good arrangement. Better than any temple in India. If you go sometimes, I request you to go, but one condition, that you have to become a life member. Everyone laughs. <laughs> But if you go, we'll be very much pleased in our temples. And this, 
Dr. Rao, perhaps you know, he is a professor in your Gorakhpur University. He was a research scholar, atomic research scholar. His wife is sitting here, so he's still. So he's very much captivated with the temple worship, and there he became my disciple. So our temple is very nice, just like this temple. You see practically how they are managing. Here, of course, we have no facility. But in other temples, we have got very nice decorated. There is a chandelier here. Chandelier, and if you see, we have got pictures. It is very nice. So this movement is increasing, and our branches are increasing graphically. Every month, one branch. And these boys are doing very enthusiastically. So why not spread this movement in India? It is India's culture. Why Indians are lacking? That is my... I have brought them to show you example. This is a genuine movement. Krishna. People are harassed. Quote, where is God? End quote. Krishna, here is God. Why don't you take Krishna? Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. And Krishna's order is there in the Bhagavad Gita. Manmana Bhagavan Bhakto Madhyaji Mahamas. Why you are misusing this Bhagavad Gita? You take it very seriously and let there be a successful world movement. Krishna consciousness movement, and people will be happy. Actually, that is the peace formula. Bhaktaram Janya Tapasham Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suryam Sarva Bhutanam Yantamam Shantam Echati. Shanti means to understand Krishna, or God, as the supreme enjoyer. Here in the material world, everyone wants to be enjoyer. That is, that is, poss that is not possible. Not everyone is enjoyer. Everyone is servant. But his misconception is that, quote, I am enjoyer. That is called my illusion. He is not an enjoyer, he is servant. So Krishna therefore says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharma Tritya Nonikam Saranam Vaja. Sarva Dharma, we have created some Dharma. Some Dharma is for lording it over the material nature, karmis. The karmis are trying to lord it over the material nature, all resources, working hard day and night, how to lord it over the material world. This is one Dharma. Another Dharma, when the karmi is frustrated because he cannot enjoy, because he is not enjoyer, artificially he is trying to enjoy. Then when he is frustrated, then he says, Brahma Satyam Jagam Mitya. Quote, the Brahma is Satya and this world is false. End quote. Then he becomes a sannyasi, a renouncer, but he cannot live in that renouncement platform. And then he again becomes back to this material world and engages himself in some philanthropic work. Quote, let us open the hospital. Let's open schools and colleges. If the Brahma Satyam Jagamitya, if the world is Mitya, false, why you are again a sannyasi, you are coming again back to this platform. That means he's not satisfied in so-called Brahma Satyam. Practically, he has no realization of Brahman. Therefore, he comes back again. And that is, I mean to say, indicated in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, that ye ne ravin daksha vimukta manina. Persons who are thinking that I have become liberated, I have become Narayan, I have become God, I have become Brahman. Brahman, everyone is Brahman, constitute, that's a fact. But there is another par, Param Brahma, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Avicham Paramam Brahm Bhavam, Krishna. So the Maya body philosophers, they mistake that Param Brahman or myself, all the same. Uh, no, that is not the fact. Therefore, without having the shelter of the Param Brahman, he falls down again in this material world. Aruya, see, because he has no information of the Lord's feet of Krishna, he falls down again to the material platform. So just like pendulum, the clock pendulum, talk, 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 sometimes he's renouncer and sometimes he's enjoyer. Sometimes he's accepting. For example, don't take it otherwise. Just like our national father, he renounced everything. But renounced for what? Greater enjoyment. That is, his countrymen will be happy. Quote, the Britishers will go away. We shall get independence and we shall be enjoyed. You see? So this renouncement or that, again, rena renouncement, renouncement for enjoyment. The Mayavadi philosophers, they say, renounce this world. Brahman Satyam Jagan Mitya, Jagan Mitya. But I want to be one with that Supreme. That is for greater enjoyment. I have failed to enjoy this world even after becoming Prime Minister or a big man. 
Now I'll become God. I guess we can stop there uh, for now. Did anybody want to say anything uh, about his divine grace? Pakistan stars, so I think it's so much. Well, I, um, I heard some things this morning, uh, like really early this morning, and um, uh, one is that uh, his father, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, gave him three instructions. That's Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. Gave him three instructions. One of them was to develop Mayapur. The other was uh, to, um, to organize the uh, Parikrama of the Nine Islands. And um, the other was to establish Varnashram, which is something that's still unfinished. Um, then his spiritual master, Gorkashore Das Babaji, he gave him three instructions. <coughs> now this is very interesting. He said, do not go to Calcutta, because he felt Gorkashore was the Babaji and Calcutta was just bad news, just my material. And uh, don't accept any disciples. And the third one was, uh, don't associate with materialistic men. So, he, his explanation to his disciples was, because we know he had nice uh, Gaudiya temples and in Calcutta still, even now to this day. And he said, well, I went to such and such Bhavan, which is Vaikuntha. I didn't go to Calcutta. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, I didn't accept disciples. I see you all as my gurus. Mm -hmm. It's like Prabhupada always used to say, you are all representatives of my spiritual master. Mm -hmm. He has sent you. And, and actually, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada used to refer to his disciples as Prabhus. Mm -hmm. say Prabhu. Mm -hmm. So then, don't associate with materialistic men. This pictures up with uh, him with the very famous uh, Maharishi of Tir uh, uh, I don't know if it's Tirupati or one, some very important Maharaj, and also the governor from the you know the Raj from the British Raj, the British. Uh, governor of Bengal and other places, and he would meet with some other scholars and photographs of him. And he said, Association with materialistic man means you take from him. I never took anything from them, I only gave to them. So, this is how he explains that I, my spiritual master's instructions were kept. <laughs> um, and of course, we, we know that he. The story about how he um, had to, uh, the, 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 his, his father had given him the instruction that you must accept, get, you must take the initiation from Gokushar Das Babaji. And uh, Gokushar Das Babaji didn't want any followers. He said, I've already had one disciple and I've had nothing but bad luck. So I don't want any more disciples. Yeah, I can see Dr. Maharaj said that. Gorkashur Das Babaji said that to Bhakti Siddhanta. Yeah, that's what uh, I heard this morning. Can you say that again? Two different people. Can you I say that? Two different group of Vilas and another devotee. What? He, he did accept Bhakti Siddhanta. In but, any... but, let me just tell the story. He, he, um, so he said, but I, you ha I have, to, you have to accept me as a disciple. Please, you know, my, my father, uh, who you, uh, is your Sikh Guru, he's telling me. That um, I have to accept, you have to accept me as your spiritual, uh, as your disciple. So, well, let me talk to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, he comes back to see him, and there's no mention of it. So then, Bhakti Siddhanta says, Well, have you, have you seen Lord Chaitanya? He said, Yes, I did. But, oh, I forgot. I forgot to ask. <laughs> and then, this goes on like two, three times, maybe four times. And finally, he he says, because that, that my father has told me, if I don't, you don't accept me, then my life is useless. I am not to return home. I'm, I will, I'm going to commit suicide. I will jump in the Ganga. And so when he sees how serious he is. He also, someone said that you, uh, uh, you are the servant of Lord Chaitanya. And, and Lord Chaitanya, you all are ser the servant of that uh, crooked boy, Krishna, and he's always cheating. So what is the use? I will just take my life. And when he, said, when he was saying like this, uh, Gorkashur Das Babaji um, 
understood his sincerity of his heart, and he accepted him as his disciple. And he gave him, at the time of initiation, when Gorkashaw had come from Vindavan to Bengal, he brought, he was wearing a tiger skin hat. He had um, a rope with the uh, knots, and that was his japamala. Uh, or it was, this was given to him by his, his uh, spiritual master, who was a disciple of Jagannath Das Babaji. And his name was something like Bhagavad Babaji, something like that. And he, his spiritual master gave him this um, mala made of rope with knots. And then a little basket with, um, you know, with tilak, um, you know, those things that you use to put tilak on, but this had the Hare Krishna mantra on it. It was like a, a print, you, you put tilak on it, and then you put the Hare Krishna mantra and tilak on your body. And um, I think one other thing, and Gorkishore got Das Babaji gave him those things at the time of initiation. So um, then there's two versions of the mango story, which we all know, when he was very, very young. One is, is that he actually ate an unoffered mango and then was told that it hadn't been offered and he said, I'm a great sinner, I will never eat another mango. And he never did, um, even though he... Uh, it is the king of fruits, and uh, he would never eat it because he had eaten an unoffered mango. But the other is, is that uh, there's one version that he never actually ate it. He was desiring to eat it before it was offered. And that's how serious he was. In either case, he, ne he kept that vow his entire life. There's so, so many things that indicate. And you, when you see these pictures of him, because he passed away, he was like 62 years old. 62? Yeah. And um, he looks much older than that because of the severe austerities that he was performing, staying up so late to write uh, very little sleep and um, fasting. And, and, you know, he had done a vow. It took something like five years. He was standing 300,000 rounds a day, or names a day, uh, japa mantras a day, uh, three, uh, three laps of rounds. It took, it was one billion, one billion Hare Krishna mantras. It took something like five and a half years. Or something. And um, this was uh, in my court, he did this, where the, uh, where the yoga pit is, what's your time is birth was. Uh, he was, he, by the time he was seven years old, he had memorized the entire Bhagavad Gita. And not only did he memorize it, he knew it and could explain it. He was called the Living Encyclopedia. Whatever he heard, he had a photographic memory. Uh, he was not recognized as a great scholar and defeated the smart Brahmins. And Bhakti, you know, at one point there was some controversy because there was a lot of Sahajas. And Bhakti, you know, was more diplomatic. But Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada was called Singha Guru, Lion Guru. He had no, very little diplomacy. He was very hot, strong, you know. So that's when they were in Jagannapuri and Bhakti Vinod sent them to Mayapur. You know, let me deal with this. <laughs> Whenever he'd be walking down the street and a Mayavadi saw him coming, and the person saw him coming, they would cross the street because they didn't want to confront him. He was a very strong preacher. But he was very well respected by all classes of men. And um, anyway, that, there's a lot to be... Yeah, there's a lot um, about his life in the uh, uh, books by Bhakti Vikashwam. And so we're very fortunate to have, you know, our spiritual master, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Um, like he said, I, he didn't have so much physical association, but the real association with your spiritual master is Vani. And he, he followed the instructions of Bhakti Siddhanta by coming to the West and translating all of these books so that the English-speaking world, the German-speaking, the French-speaking, the Spanish-speaking, all the languages of the world now know Krishna and Bhagavad Gita. Uh, thank you, Prabhupada. Uh, thank you, Prabhupada. Uh, I guess mine. Oh, she's right here. She's first? Or? I don't know. Right there? I thought. I saw, I saw your hand up first. Oh, okay. Um, at some point, I forgot from where, I learned that uh, so Bhakti Siddhanta's father, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, gave him two deities to worship, I think sometime mm -hmm. in his childhood. 
And one was one was on the second day, and one was Kurma. He found it. He found he, it. They were uh, excavating, like making oh, a place right. to live, and he found yes. a Kurma Sheila oh. in the dirt, which was very unusual. This was in Calcutta, yes. and he taught him a mantra for that. And so it's something. So he always worshipped those two, and there was something about one for, for protection. I can't remember too well. What was the other one? The Kurma and, and the Sheila. One singing it. Oh, for okay. protection and for swimming in the rasas. I have rasas. a karma. I have so, a Swimming in the rasas. Yeah. For um, swimming in the rasas. That would be karma. That was, yeah. Person? Oh, what I was thinking mm -hmm. about was about when I, I was watching the Hare Krishna movie, and what came to my mind was how Bhakti mm -hmm. Siddhartha used, I think it's called Yukta Bhairagya, even though um, a lot of the boys work, don't weren't doing that, but he would use cars, he would use all these things for the service of uh, preaching and, and giving people Krishna consciousness. Like mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm thinking about that one. Day. There's also, a, like, you see him at different points of his life, and um, what, at one point, sort of when he's really doing, getting the movement, uh, according to Mata's status, you see him he'll wear a turban, a very mm -hmm. long, um, like top uh, mm -hmm. coat, you know, like a what do you call them? No, regular coat, like a, a Western overcoat, an overcoat. overcoat. And he was wearing a uh, spat. You know what a spat is? Yeah. No, like it's a, a spat. It goes a spat is like, over the shoes. You, you put it over the shoes, like it's like a you lace it, and it's like it looks Short like lady. you know, you see soldiers wearing this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make it looks like a boot. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a boot. Yeah. And it was, you know, sort of a British thing, so he wanted to look, uh, so he had nice uh, shoe and spat and then overcoat with the turban. Mm -hmm. uh, but the driving of the car was only to go preaching, mm -hmm. otherwise you had to walk to the mm -hmm. temple. And I, was thinking, I was thinking also about the Vyasa's on in Los Angeles and how he was always stressing, where is book, where is book, where is book? And mm -hmm. how he would explain that this is what Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, my spiritual master, has given me this instruction. Mm -hmm. That if you have any money, print books like that. So mm -hmm. Prabhupada was like on that Vyasa sign. He'd always try to, he always took to heart his spiritual master's um, yeah, instructions. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Forgive my ignorance. Is uh, is that Prabhupada in that picture? The no, picture. That, that that's Swati Siddhanta Saraswati, his spiritual master. Uh, his name, but he was also called by that title, Prabhupada. Oh, Prabhupada is okay. title. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it, his appearance day is the day he was born, or right. the day he appeared in America? No, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada never came to America. I mean, that's, this is his birthday. Well, um, so who are, you read, who are you reading from? The Prabhupada or his spiritual master? Uh, Prabhupada's giving a lecture, and it's on his spiritual master's appearance today. This is one of the lectures he gave yeah, one, speaking, one of the years, you know. He's speaking on his spiritual master's birthday, but uh, a, a good part of the lecture, he was just speaking about his own history of coming. How he met Dr. Siddhanta and why he's done what he's done. What this yes. is, it's all coming because of his spiritual <coughs> master's instruction. Prabhupada means at the feet uh, that many masters take shelter. Prabhu is a master, Pala in his feet. And those are his books. Well, the, yes. the Brahma Samhita. That has some uh, translation. Well, he, he, he wrote that book. The and his kind of published it. We published it. Uh, but it, it was written by Prabhupada's spiritual master. Wow. That's that why was, it's difficult to That was like before the 20s. That was like in the 20s. Yeah, probably in the 20s, someplace like that. Bhaksadana Saraswati goes to you know, uh, it's pretty amazing because so highly technical advanced writing that you try to read one paragraph, you might have to read it three times to, <laughs> to really, you know, but, and, but also the thing about Srila Prabhupada is that um, he could take the most advanced spiritual precepts 
and he can deliver it in a palatable form for us in this age. And we are so thankful for that. But you can go back one guru and you can see, this is what Prabhupada, his guru, I mean, the lion guru, you know, wow. Uh, but we're so thankful so that we can understand more easily what Bhaktisiddhanta was saying through Srila Prabhupada, you know. So, uh, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta wrote Brahma Samhita in English. That was not his first language. He learned English by reading a dictionary. And to him, all the words were equal because he read them in a dictionary. So he used all kinds of big words that we don't know. So you have to read it with a that one right there, Brahma Samhita. You have to read it with a dictionary. But he's very straightforward. When you figure out the sentence and everything, you figure out what he's saying, it's very straightforward and simple. He's simply, basically explaining the philosophy. And the significance of all this is that the British, who were occupying at the time, were trying to portray uh, the Indian culture as primitive, mm -hmm. as tribal, aboriginal. Mm -hmm. And here, he comes along and then he translates something into English. And most English-speaking people can't understand what he's saying. It is much more uh, erudite and uh, much more, and the concepts, the philosophical, spiritual concepts, uh, they're not his, they are from the uh, authorized uh, group, spiritual masters and the Supreme Personality of Godhead that he's represented. These concepts are far superior to anything that the British were bringing to, the, to India. I mean, there's, you know, of course, Jesus Christ, we accept him as a, a guru, our guru, and, <coughs> and the bona fide son of God, Shakta Veshavatar. Um, but there, the Christian uh, theology um, <coughs> is limited. Like Jesus Christ himself said, there's much more for me to teach you, but you're not ready to hear it. And with us, we're getting the basic, simple thing. In this age, all we have to do is just say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, how be thy name. And not only that, but this is Kali Yuga, and it's like, we're dullards in this age. That's right. you know. But the thing, it's funny, you can go to a, a, a library, and go into like the historical section. Well, I've done this before. And I picked up in Alabama, I picked up the Daughters of the American Revolution, and I just started reading. And it was like so advanced and erudite and just so you know, complicated. I had to read it slowly. I said, this is such, you know, uh, elevated language. And, and it was the same way with uh, uh, like uh, uh, Franklin, what, no, uh, Benjamin Franklin. I picked up one of his books one time, I was trying to read it. And you know, it's just the further back you go, it just seems like more advanced people were. But do you think also do you think uh, some of those words are archaic mm -hmm. in meaning like obsolete? Yeah, they kind of words that they've kind of fallen out of use. Yeah. Even in um Bhakti Vikash Maharaj's uh, book there's a section in the back, uh, like a, a a dictionary for the archaic words that he used in, when describing Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj's life. But so that could be part of it. Right, but he's also, you look at William Shakespeare in the 1500s. Yeah. Who writes plays like that? Of course, again, what Mamaji just said is true because the language, that, uh, the language those words, even the, the letters, like in some cases, I think uh, an, a P or an F is, is an S uh, yeah, for some reason. So some of the words are archaic. That's true, but still, the literature that's written by people before us is usually um, a better quality. We're pretty, we're pretty basic now in this age. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know, you know. I, I, that, that maybe for the common person, but a lot of those literatures that we're talking about were not written for common people. And if you, if we look at you know, academic books, they're also not written for common people. And it's a lot more difficult for common people, lay people, to read. Shakespeare was written for the common folk. The, the common folk came to listen to his plays. And so did, so did the nobles and everyone else. Yeah. 
I do have an update because uh, you know I always let y'all know what Elon Musk is doing these days. But I have a major update which I did not know his scope of thinking. And he wants to build a hundred uh, spaceships per year capable of actually going to Mars. In one in ten years, he wants to have a thousand ships, and he wants to uh, launch them all at the same time. That's a hundred thousand people he wants to populate Mars. It's a hundred thousand chances. And he's to... building. He's already got a few of them already built. And you know what I mean? He's sending them up nowhere. The bottom rocket's two hundred and twenty-four uh, feet long. That's it has thirty-seven Raptor engines to launch the hundred people, which are in a separate rocket, which is a hundred and. 36 uh, feet long, I believe, 30 feet wide. Who's going to want to do that? He's got big, uh, I'm sorry? Who's going to want to do that? There are people. Yeah. There are people. There are people. Yeah. There are people. Yeah. There are people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think they, I've heard them. Well, Matt Damon made a movie about being stranded on Mars. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was realistic. It was scientific. They followed the scientific. You know, but I mean, what's there? I mean, it's, you got to wear an astronaut suit. It's freezing cold. I mean, there's no, you can't grow anything. You have to bring your own, uh, you have to create your own, what is it, topsoil, you know what I mean? And you have to have an enclosed environment with greenhouses. And Many they, you know, we, we don't, that's what they say, but yeah. you know, actually, according to data, is that all the planets are populated. But I'd like to mention one more thing about Papa Sudan, the problem. Uh -huh. And uh, when he was uh, just born, first of all, his father was praying for a ray of Vishnu to help him in his preaching work. Uh, and because at that time, Vaishnav philosophy had uh, the, they had become Sahajas. And Bhaktivinoda you know, was very strong re establishing the, the true teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And um, so, uh, when, and when he, they were living in Jagannath Puri, he, he was born February 6th, 1874, something like that. And uh, they were living in Jagannath Puri. So there was a Jagannath procession. <clears throat> and uh, when the uh, the cart was coming past the house of Bhakti Vinod, um, it got stopped and it actually sat there for three days. And actually, you know, in the Catholic tradition, there are processions where they take Mary out and, and the mothers bring their babies up in front of the, the Statue of Mary. And in, in South America, they'll bring, they have processions where they take Jesus Christ on procession and the, all the mothers take, bring the babies in front. So, in that same line, what line it, uh, Bhakti Vinod, uh, wife, uh, the mother of Bhakti Siddhanta, uh, arranged so that he could be put up on the cart at the feet of uh, Lord Jagannath. And he reached, as an infant, touched the feet of Lord Jagannath. And at that moment, the garland from Jagannath fell around his body. And it says that his bodily uh, features, I think there's something like, is it 38 or... Some, I can't remember the number of like a broad forehead, three lines on the neck, three lines on the chest, um, the, in, long arms. He had all of those bodily features of a Mahapurush, great personality. Jai, all the glories of Srila Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, our glories of some of the devotees. To the entire Param Prash, Shishi Gorning Tai, Shishi Radha Radha Kanta, Ki Jai! Thank you.